Actoberfest is here. This is one of my favorite events of the year, and we're going to talk a little bit about it and try to figure out if you should contribute to Hacktoberfest as well. So if you don't know what Hacktoberfest is, it's a month-long celebration for all things open-sourced. Um, one of the things that I really liked about Hacktoberfest the first year that I did it was it was an opportunity for me to work on an open-source project that wasn't necessarily my own and actually contribute to a project with another group of developers, which sounds intimidating. Um, it really has not been that bad. And since then, I've done a little bit of contributing to open source projects, um, a little bit of kicking off my own open source projects and trying to get people to work on those with me. And it's it's been a really great experience. I look forward to it every year. Uh, so if you're interested in doing this, I do have a video that will walk you through um, how to find projects. I'll link that later when we get to that. But you can come to their website, hacktoberfest.com, hit start hacking. Uh, it'll authorize you. Um, I'm going to authorize with GitHub. Okay, so once you sign in with either GitHub or GitLab, it will pull up your profile here. Um, hopefully you see your name. That's a good sign that it is working as expected. Uh, you can edit your info if you need to. So um, you might have to fill this out. Uh, in fact, I think you will have to fill this out for the first time that you sign up this year. Uh, but, you know, some self-identification, your experience level with Hacktoberfest, what you're interested in contributing. So um, for me, it's code and non-code. Uh, I do blog things as well. So this would be uh, non-code, uh, documentation, design, etc. If you're currently enrolled as a student, um, I am not. Uh, your job role, you get some options. Some Pick something that's close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, your country that you're participating from. This is optional, but it kind of helps them get stats on where people are participating from. And you can opt into marketing things. Um, DigitalOcean, Kira, who is a new sponsor this year, and Cloudflare uh, are companies that are sponsoring uh, Hacktoberfest. So these are some of the, the high tier sponsors. Um, I don't particularly want to get emails from any of them, so I will say that I don't want those. Uh, so once you save it, you'll have a screen like this. Um, it, this is your progress. The idea is that you're submitting four pull requests to open source projects and getting those merged. There's some caveats. The pull requests can't be spammy. Uh, so the owner of the repository has the ability to mark a pull request as spam. Um, and if they do that, you won't get credit. And if you do a couple of spammy pull requests, you can even be disqualified. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, additionally, I need to double check this because last year this was the case and it was kind of a pain, but um, you could only get credit if you contributed to a repository with the Hacktoberfest label. Part of the issue we were seeing was people were making a ton of spammy pull requests to projects that weren't Hacktoberfest related or, or didn't opt into Hacktoberfest, I guess. And uh, it was causing a lot of friction for people, open source maintainers specifically, who don't have a ton of time uh, because most of them are employed full time as well, and they're maintaining things in their spare time. So if you do participate, you get these hollow pin badges. Um, these are interesting. They're very much not NFTs, uh, but in an interesting way, they're kind of similar to what a lot of NFTs were. Uh, so they're not on, on a blockchain or anything like that. No, no worries. But it, it is essentially just a digital pin, like P-I-N, uh, like a collector's pin um, that you get for Hacktoberfest and participating. Uh, one of the neat things about it is your pin uh, evolves based on your contributions. So the more you contribute, the more that your pin will change, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is sponsored by, you know, Holopin. They, they are a part of this uh, program as well. So if you do want these things, you'll have to create a Holopin account. Um, it's neat. I have an account from two years ago, I think, and last year as well, and this year. Uh, it's all one in the same account, but um, they're they're nice. They don't spam you. There's, there's nothing crazy going on like that. So uh, it's a nice little added benefit. You can use this to keep track of your merge and pull requests. So once you start making pull requests, they will uh, show up here, and then they will have a status next to them. And basically, once they get merged in or approved, there's an approval flag that can be added, even if they're not merged. Uh, a countdown will show up on the right. And then um, that basically just gives them a certain amount of time to change their mind. Uh, or um, it also gives you the ability to create that pull request. And then if the maintainer is not very active, it's, it's not necessarily hurting you because it's essentially a countdown for that to either be merged in or 
marked as successful. Uh, yeah, a little blurb. They update every 15 minutes if you're loading the page often or once every six hours in the background. Uh, if you want to learn more about like privacy and terms, that stuff's down here. Um, the communities for Hacktoberfest aren't necessarily big in, in my area, at least. Uh, but I know that in major cities, you can find Hacktoberfest like workshops and events and things of that nature. Um, so if you want more information about it, you can find information on this page. Uh, the one thing that I really want to point out are the contributor section. So if you're a contributor, here's how it works. I've kind of gone over all this already. Um, and then beginner resources. So if you're new to GitHub and open source, if you don't know anything about contributing to open source or what even open source is or how to use Git, there's information here. And then uh, I will link a video for this because I have a, a video that talks about these as well. Um, but it's essentially tools to help you find uh, your first couple of projects and how to contribute to projects for the first time. Um, so like upforgrabs.net is mentioned here. There's a couple other sites. Good first issue. This one's new, hacktoberfestprojects.vercel.app. Uh, but the idea is you can, you know, go to one of these and find things based off your interests. So um, I want, show me JavaScript. Okay, so Carto has three issues that are labeled up for grabs. Um, up for grabs, good first issue, help wanted. You can kind of see the labels here. But these are generally issues that are pretty nice for new uh, contributors to the project. Not necessarily new developers. Some of them could be kind of complicated. Um, but they don't require you to have a lot of background with that project to get started. Uh, these other ones are very similar. So good first issues, very, very similar. I want show me Rust. So here's some examples. Um, there's Nenu, probably butchering that name. XPLR, Diesel, I've used this before. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then Core Utils. Um, so yeah, you can find those and again I'll, i will link that video right here probably um that has even more information on how to find your first project and how to start contributing to uh, open source uh this is the thing that i mentioned um so it needs to be within the bounds of hacktoberfest so there is this time limit october 1st october 31st uh repos that go against hacktoberfest values will be excluded prs must not be spammy there's information about this um, must be in a repo tagged with Hacktoberfest topic or have the Hacktoberfest accepted label. I'm going to pull up my GitHub really quick and I'll show you exactly what that looks like because I have a couple Hacktoberfest repos that we could talk about. Um, maybe. Yeah, easy zip. Uh, so I wrote this really tiny uh, zip unzip with optional AES-256 encryption. Uh, CLI and go a while back. So it has a uh, label or a topic called Hacktoberfest. Um, but let's say you are working on something and the topic doesn't exist. Uh, the owner of that repo can create a label called Hacktoberfest. Uh, I don't think I have one because I have the topic, uh, but they can create a label and then assign it to your pull request and you can still get credit for it on Hacktoberfest even if uh, the topic does not exist. Oh, yeah, there's the label, Hacktoberfest accepted. Uh, PRs must not be labeled as invalid, sure. They must be merged and have the Hacktoberfest accepted label or have an overall approving review. Um, then there's a seven day review period that I mentioned before. Covers most of it. This section I think is new this year and I've not read through this yet. So uh, at its core, Hacktoberfest aims to encourage more people to participate in open source and collaborate to enhance the software driving our world today. Open source projects can benefit greatly from community contributions, and there are a multitude of ways to get involved that don't involve coding. Whether you possess technical expertise or not, you can leverage your professional skills to support open source projects in line with last year's efforts were committed to promoting contributions that don't require technical knowledge. You can learn more at the README project, I guess. Uh, here's some examples. So technical documentation, user experience testing, technical blog post or tutorial. This is really nice. That might encourage me to write another blog post or two this month. Uh, case studies, and then uh, non-code contributions, writing, translating, copy editing, talks, presentations, event organizations, podcasts, social media, blog posts, video production, and graphic design. 
Um, so do I get rewards for participating? This is uh, the fun part. So over the past couple of years, they used to do a Hacktoberfest t-shirt. Uh, last year they stopped. Um, and I think it was just too much uh, logistically and environmentally. And um, yeah, it, it was it was interesting. I love the shirts. I thought they were really cool. I always looked forward to getting those. Um, but I understand where they're coming from. And, and this year, I don't think they're doing shirts again or anything like that. So you get a digital badge through Holopin. Uh, you unlock a new level of your badge, letting you customize it and show it to the community uh, for, for your achievement. Why isn't there a t-shirt? Yeah, okay, cool. So they do talk about that. Logistical challenges associated with creating a reward. No longer feasible for us to provide a free t-shirt. Um, instead of a t-shirt, we're partnering with Holopin to provide a digital badge. Uh, so one thing that's not mentioned here is, and, and this may not happen, so don't don't quote me on this and say that I said that it was going to happen, but if you participate in Hacktoberfest and do the challenge and do your four pull requests, historically, the sponsors of Hacktoberfest also give you a reward kit. So one year we had uh, AppRite as a sponsor, uh, and what AppRite did is oops, they gave us um, credit for their platform. Uh, I don't remember the exact amount. I'm just going to spitball a random number and say something like 250 USD worth of credit to build on their platform. Um, obviously, the the flip side to this is they want you to start building on their platform with that credit so that whenever you want to continue growing and keep using it and that credit runs out, you'll continue using AppRite. Uh, but it is really nice if you want to try out new products, especially if they're paid products, as long as those people are sponsoring Hacktoberfest and they choose to do a sponsor package again this year. So they may, they may not. I don't see anything on that. Um, so if there was a year that they don't do it, this might be the year. But yeah, so this is Hacktoberfest. Uh, should you do it? Um, I would say yes. Uh, I want to caveat this by saying I know how hard it can be, especially if you're a new dev to find something to work on that's open source. Um, and I know how hard it can be to find things that uh, you want to work on, even if you're not a new dev. Um, but the idea here is it's four pull requests. That's really not that many. And part of the spirit of Hacktoberfest is that the maintainers, people who maintain those repositories, are uh, intentionally setting themselves up to help onboard new people to their project. So what they're getting out of this, hopefully, is contributions to their code base, but ideally they're helping set up people for long-term contributions. So um, while you can show up and do a contribution and and not contribute again, um, and maybe just do your four for Hacktoberfest or whatever, in a perfect world, what happens is you find a project that you really like and you're very interested in and it's a language that you want to use and the tools are fun to work with and you believe in the mission behind it and you do your four pull requests for that project and then once you do those four uh, you continue making pull requests and you become a contributing member of the project because the fact is open source needs more contributors. Um, so should you do it? I think so. Yeah, I, I think you should at least give it a try. There's literally no downside. You hit start hacking, you sign up with your GitHub or GitLab. And even if you don't do a single pull request, it's not like anyone's going to be mad at you. Uh, there's no monetary cost to get started. It's completely free. So yeah, I, I think you should. And if you do want to get started, um, I did mention some events, uh, so there's global events. You can find those here, virtual events. That's nice. Um, so this is tomorrow or today, depending on what time you watch this video, or I guess in the past, depending on the time, um, some in-person meetups, another virtual meetup, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Anything else? Uh, there's a donate tab. I assume, oh, this is really nice. I don't think they had this last year. Uh, so essentially these are open source projects that are in need of financial support, uh, to develop new features, cover expenses and continue their regular activities. Um, so they're kind of helping surface some of that as well, which is really nice. Uh, and then there's a discord for Hacktoberfest that you can join. I don't think I've joined it, but I'm not going to pull up discord right now. Um, if you're unfamiliar with discord, it's just a, a community platform. Uh, so you can message and chat with other people, both via voice and, uh, video and, um, text. Uh, it's a really nice platform and a lot of the programming community has been embracing it recently. Okay. Uh, so I think that just about covers it. So should you do Hacktoberfest this year? Uh, my answer is yes. You should probably give it a shot. 
uh, the skills that you'll build and the relationships that you could build are well worth it, in my opinion. And there's literally no cost except a little bit of your time to get started. Thanks and good luck hacking in Hacktoberfest this year.